Hello everybody. Uh, how is my volume? Because I don't usually stream from Windows and I had to reset up everything. Okay, just making sure it's not like abysmal before I even attempt to begin anything. Let's play some Hugo. Uh, DosGameClub.com is playing this trilogy for October. It's a fun podcast. Hello! It's a fun podcast, and I thought it would be fun to try and take back my world record speedrunning this game. Uh, before we even do anything like that, we're just gonna play through the game pretty normally. Game louder than me. Well, that's easy to fix. Is this any better? Okay, sorry for any ear damage I cause. Hugo is really anxious to get going here. You can see in the corner. Uh, is there anybody here who hasn't actually played these games at all? Like, ever? Just at a complete loss to what this beautiful work of art before them is? Okay, yeah, um, well, essentially what Snorb is saying, this is just a parser-based adventure game. You get to move around with arrow keys and type in what you want you have to do while you're doing that. You are in front of the house where Penelope was last seen. If you were to rescue her, you must find a way inside, no matter what lies ahead. These are very well-known adventures. If you had a shareware CD with DOS games, you almost certainly had these on it. I got this on a shareware CD myself, the same one that got me a billion other DOS games and got me into all that in like the late 90s thanks to a garage sale find. Uh, the art in this game is kind of neat because a lot of it is just like converted clip art. I know I've seen uh, one of those like Twitter bots that just posts all the clip art on a on various like clip art CDs. I've seen this house before. And if you actually like buy the game on GOG, you get the manual and things and you'll have like the original assets in it. But our story for this game is we are Hugo. Our girlfriend Penelope took a babysitting job at this house and has yet to return. So our job is to rescue her. And when I had this as a child, my brother and I we would try it a lot, and we couldn't get past this screen. Take a look at the house. We can, you know, try and climb the fence. Hello, welcome. Try to fail miserably. Hugo is not very good at climbing. Not even that tall of a fence, either. Don't look at the moon. You'll go blind. There's a bat flying around up there, too, currently hiding. There it is. It's just flapping around up there, as one does. But your goal is to figure out how to get in the house, first and foremost. Okay, well, don't have the pumpkin. Open the door. It's locked. Climbing the window. Hugo is just not very good. He ain't much of a hero, as we'll see. He tries his best. He'll get the job done. But it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge for him to... I mean, his eyes are pretty rough. Those sensitive eyes of his. Does the house give us anything different? 
the spooky looking house. I think you should go inside. As a kid, this was as far as we could get. We'd hear the fun little intro music, which the author, oh, she just said it on the intro, David something. I feel bad for not having looked this up in advance now. But he said that the intro theme is the Dragnet theme before it turns into something else at the end. David Gray, that's it. Thank you, Snorp. Me and my brother would try this one a lot. Never make any progress. Eventually, we got mad at the game. And we tried some petty vandalism. And it works. Sure enough, inside the pumpkin is a key. Uh, this is a very amateurish game. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's definitely got plenty of weird decisions and things. But it, it does have some stuff that's like, um, maybe not the best. Like, we can't get all the points now because we broke the pumpkin. If you pick up the pumpkin, you get points. If you pick up the pumpkin and then break it to get the key, you get all the points. There's a lot of stuff like that. Uh, apologies every time you see that. That's me pressing my mic mute button. Which thankfully doesn't actually matter for the parser. It just kind of strips out, I think, non-alphabetic characters entirely. Lucky us. But we can get our key. Unlock that door. Open that door. And the game opens up. There's a... a guy. Mad scientist type. Cool portrait of a bat. Don't look at it though, it's too scary. You're in the hall. Sounds as if a big feast or something is going on in the room on the right. There's a flight of stairs to the left. So far, your presence has gone undetected. The aesthetic of this game is pretty fantastic. Uh, let's uh, make a save here. That's a good question, because there's not really a lot you can do as far as how long it took until we decide to try and smash the pumpkin. Hello, welcome. Yeah, oh, that's another thing. This is a trilogy. I'm... Almost certainly only going to play the first one. I have beaten the others in the past. I don't have them nearly as memorized. And in what little bit I did of glitch, glitch hunting in them, I couldn't find anything. I'm sure there's stuff if you really try. The original game is definitely the buggiest by far. Third one is like Hugo is in a plane crash and you're in the jungle. The second one is... I like the second one, honestly. It's just kind of weird. Actually, let's uh, pop open the help menu with F1 here. We can see the instructions, toggle the sound. We can instantly recall the last command we entered, which is good if you have a small typo or something. Save, restore, view our inventory, and the boss button. So we've got our key. That's it. And our boss button is... In case you're playing Hugo, Hugo is not safe for work. Now, no one will ever know. Spreadsheets and business. I do like that the DOS box opening still shows up in it for some reason. But you just exit out of this once your boss leaves and go back to playing your games. Yeah, the series does eventually turn into Nightmare 3D. Which I've still actually never played whatsoever, and DOS Game Club did do that some time back. They like to do, to keep it spooky for October. But uh, let's get back over here, let's make a save. Most of these saves, I promise, don't matter much. Forget death time, I'm gonna say... Twitch. Let me explore our mansion. Mansion? It's just a house. It's not a very big house. Kitchen, backyard, dining room, which also connects to the living room. Uh, this has the beautiful witch portrait. That is the best art in the game by far. You got your Frankenstein monsters and your Draculas and your lady. 
and death and your butler. Sure. I'll have a chop. Very good, sir. Here, just a moment. You're not one of us. You're a bloomin' interloper. Come here, you little blighter. I'm going to chop your head off. They don't mind you walking in, but when you ask for a chop... It appears your game is up, so to speak. The butler deftly slices your head off with a handy carving knife. So much for rescuing Penelope. Look at that. We lost our head, quite literally. All you can do at this point is restore, save game, or quit. So this game is actually pretty short. Start actually doing some stuff in here. Check out our cool table. Small round wooden table, useful for putting things on, like candles. That's great. I haven't played this game normally in quite some time. Get the candle, get some points for it. Uh, we can look at our candle. A useful looking candle. The game will teach you words, is you have to figure out how do you describe this thing under stairs? Actually, does look under stairs work? Nope. Cubbyhole does. I don't see anything much in here. Also, yes, it's uh, this is our first, well, not our first puzzle. This is our next puzzle, in which it's usually too dark. But if you have the candle, you can see that there's a pen knife and a little silver whistle. So you get ye knife. Get ye whistle. I wonder what the whistle is for. Well, I mean, only one way to find out. It discards a lot of things, and once we get into the, the speedrun aspect, we'll start really, like, shortening our commands as that becomes important. Less typing, less time. It's... It really discards a ton of stuff. Like, will this work? Oof. That's some uh, latency there. I have DOSBox running on, like, the default 3000 cycles, which is fine. Yeah, see, that is cool with that. Blow a whistle. Nothing seems to happen. Maybe it's one of those dog whistles that only dogs can hear. It's a friendly dog. Oh dear. It seems the nice doggy has eaten you all up. You'll never get to rescue Penelope this way. Once again, we are dead. It's just a cruel trick. Don't blow the whistle. The, the dog is a bit of a thing of nightmares. People are not fond of the dog's graphics. Exquisitely bad work of art. I mean, it's moving. I think that's pretty good art. How about the wallpaper, though? Not very interesting. It's, it is a very charming game. Like, I genuinely like this a lot. You're in one of the upstairs bedrooms. There doesn't appear much of any interest at all in here. Check out the bed. Get down on your hands and knees and peer under the bed to find absolutely nothing. It was nice of the game to just immediately assume that's what I meant, because that was going to be my next command to look under it. And if we look outside... Pretty dark out there. You can just make out the outline of a shed below and amongst some trees. Some kind of... Closets. Cabinet. Like, some stuff just doesn't really even have a description. And then you also have to figure out what some of this stuff is. A shrunken monkey head? Is in fact just a mask. Just really realizing now that Hugo's face has some uh, real Chris Delta Rune vibes. That perfectly neutral expression. But we won't be seeing that for very long. 
wear the mask. Look at this. Isn't this great? Hugo's got skin problems. He's got climbing problems. He's got trouble. He's got girlfriend problems right now. You've arrived at the bathroom? Yeah, he was pretty chill about this whole thing, really. Won't look at the toilet. Will you flush the toilet? How dare they. What kind of a game doesn't let you flush the toilet? Um, run the tub. Alright, alright. Nope, Hugo refuses to acknowledge. Sink. Mirror. Appears to be something daubed on the mirror in red. It looks like the number 333. Three, three. Oh, we can really see the moon out there. Pretty dark out there. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, so like, if it doesn't understand things, it'll just kind of discard them, so Look Moon just turned into the generic look. Yeah, the bathroom is bigger than that bedroom, actually. Kind of depressing. Oop, not restore. I want to save. We have people in here, and of course, the high-frequency cosmic radiation emanating from this room knocks your mask onto the floor. You can pick it up again when you come out. Uh, this is a trilogy. There are three games in the Hugo series, and then there's Nightmare 3D, which is a first-person shooter that's this, but not this. It's what if this game was a first-person shooter? Mad Professor Speaks. Ah, there you are. I'm looking all over the house for you. Look, you're late and we haven't much time. Step into the box and we'll begin the experiment. Professor beckons you to step into the large cubicle in the center of the room. For some reason, I got the generic message pop up. What have we got in here? We've arrived in the Mad Professor's laboratory. There's a strange looking box connected to some weird machine with flashing lights. In the left hand corner of the room is a little table with an assortment of odd shaped items on it. Oh dear, I have heard that the Nightmare 3D game is pretty difficult. Oh, it didn't like my back ticks? Let's see, look box. That doesn't do anything. Right, it's because I actually had the back ticks. Yeah, there's definitely some Maniac Mansion vibes in this game, for sure. Alright, well... I mean, we're free to go, but... For science. Good, says the professor. Okay, Igor. Press the blue button. Igor grumbles something incoherent and deftly presses the red button. You idiot, Igor, roars the professor. That's all I need. A colorblind imbecile for an assistant. Oh dear, I've got my headache coming on again. I've had enough hassle for one day. I'm going to have a lie down. Oop. Find the message notifications. Professor storms off, leaving you alone with Igor. Sorry to everybody who just checked their telegram. So now we're tiny. Little Hugo. So what's the deal with Igor? He has a certain charm, I suppose. The weird machine? Lots of buttons and dials and flashing lights. Please don't ask me to try and figure it out. And we are too small to reach the door handle, so we are trapped here. Igor is not good. Or sorry, Igor is good at taking orders, but is not much of a conversationalist. Hmm. You gotta walk there, apparently. 
But in our tiny state, we can easily get behind this glass door. And you can actually get behind this while you're big. It's just really picky, and it is kind of difficult to get back out, especially. But if we check out our table here, the only thing you recognize is a useful-looking rubber bung. Thank you, David Gray, for teaching me the word bung. The actual word. The intended use of the word bung. Okay, we have a bung. But we're still very tiny. Gore. Help me. Igor. Press. The yellow button. Ah, well he listens to me. There we go. Now we're big again. But we're also a little discombobulated. A little bit confused here. Good enough though, right? No? Too bad. In your current state, you can't coordinate your hands to turn the door handle. You're just playing some roundabout. All we know is how to spin. Okay. Igor, press blue button. So it doesn't actually matter what color. It goes in like a set order. You can just say Igor, press button. This seems worse, actually. Like, this is some body horror. Not a fan of this. And we can't grip the door handle with our terrifying, half-missing body. Igor, please. No. Still won't listen. Okay. We are back to normal. Now let's never go here again. Once we find the door hitbox, at least. We did drop our masks. So let's pick that up again. Let's put that on to hide ourselves from the world. And if you've ever wondered why there's that weird mask thing, I mean, you can probably guess if you think about it a bit, but we'll see eventually, like, You'll kind of get a feel for how this game is coded and why it will not let you have a mask in there. Yeah. Listen, it's very easy to wear a mask, it turns out. Let's save here. What do we got? What's our inventory right now? F6. Our key, knife, mask, candle, whistle, bung. We got, you know, a collection of things. Okay, well, let's, uh... Not invited to the dinner table. That's kind of rude. Talk to Dracula. Mm, none of them want to talk either. Talk with death. Okay, fine, fine. So this butler kind of paces a bit, but eventually he'll start, like, hunting you down. It's easy enough to get him caught on furniture, but... All right. Let's try this again. Yes. Uh, if you say no, I don't think he ever offers you a chop again, and so your game just becomes unwinnable. It's not so much timing, so much as sometimes the game kind of gives you these special prompts, like the asking for a chop, and if you type other things, it kind of like exits that mode, and it gets weird. But okay. Now we have a juicy looking chop. Look chop. Rather yummy looking pork chop. We looked at our other stuff. What's our knife looking like? Rather useful. Our bung. Sort of round and rubbery. Mm, no, we're wearing it. Appears to be a Halloween mask looking somewhat like a grotesque monkey's head. Mm. 
second look at ourselves. Uh, check out the glasses, maybe. Painting. It is Zelda, Wicked Witch of the West. The base. It's pretty, but useless. Entire chat begins saying same. And kitchen is where things start getting a little low on ideas. There's nothing you can actually do here. The usual shed outside. Here inside, nothing to write home about. The oven. Like, literally everything just says, oh, peering inside. Where are you looking, bro? Get room. We're gonna do some sweeping, are we? Hey, the room must be gripped by some magical power. So despite your best efforts, you can't budget. More games need to do this. Yeah, if you had a shareware disc or CD, you probably ran into this game at some point. Head out here. It's a very messy looking yard. You're behind the house now in what appears to be a small fenced in yard. To the rear of the garden is a little shed. I'm not really getting garden vibes. That's an oak tree, sure. Let's climb it. You shinny, you shinny up the tree. I find lots of branches and leaves and stuff and shinny down again. Good exercise, huh? So now Hugo is like an extremely capable climber, actually. Must be his mask. You're also like penned in by the path. You can't actually, you have to keep off the grass. Sure. Mm-hmm. Climb the fence now. No, nope, see, it's just really hard to climb that fence, apparently. Okay, so shed door is locked with a combination lock. What's the combination? You can probably guess. It's 333, three, three, as helpfully written on the mirror. Door opens. Just kind of say hello. Can we look at the shed. Shed seems to have fallen into disuse and is pretty much full of garbage, either broken or rusted to pieces. You are just on the just on the point of leaving when you notice an oil can sitting on a shelf. Get oil can. Okay. So we've only got one room left in the house. And here's our dog again. Who is just as terrifying as ever. Kills us and eats our mask, apparently. So thankfully, thanks to the power of a parser, we can just type our command in advance. Throw you chop. That'll distract him. Seems to have caught the dog's attention. Looks like he's going to be rather busy for a while. Come on. Let me pet the dog. Won't let you pet the dog. It's another relic of the era. Where are we? Pretty empty looking room adjoining the kitchen. The only thing of any interest that immediately catches your eye is a rather large and ugly looking dog. Which jerk. Well, you can't really see it with where the dog parked himself, but there is a mouse hole here. You rummage around the hole and feel something soft and slightly moist. 
Ew, a medium-sized pile of mouse droppings. Wonderful. Get droppings. For goodness sakes, give me a break. I suppose this is a good time to do the classic parser test. Same to you, loser. Boring wall. Boring light. Boring rug. Not much here. But there's not really any other options. And it just so happens. I'm actually just noticing now that the right side of the rug is a little, like, off in the pattern compared to the rest. Sure enough, a secret trap door. Okay, that was not helpful. Open the trap door. Here's to be bolted shut. Then we got our, our next of this game's limited number of puzzles. To oil. The bolts. And then we can undo the bolts. And then we can open the trapdoor. And then we throw away our mask, because who needs it? And even though it like opens up and there's a little staircase there, it teleports you. Like if you're wandering around the room, you'll just be taken to this basement. And you know, as a child, this was as far as me and my brother could get. We eventually managed to make it into the basement. We are below the house now. Walls appear to be partly hewn out of rock. To the right of the basement is a large, extremely heavy looking door. You can hear the muffled sounds of someone sobbing. Open the door. Are you kidding? Well, I suppose you had to try. Needless to say, the door is locked. Looking through the door, you can make out your beloved Penelope's tear streaked face. Uh, the lab got us a bung, which as a kid, me and my brother did not ever figure out you could get. Yeah, so there's not much down here other than some big old rocks. Damn it, every rock in my new detail and come up with zilch. And this was just where the game ended when I was a kid. Made even more awkward by the fact that okay, you actually can't like shinny your way up, but if you're not like mashing the keys, you can't actually go back upstairs. So sure enough, solution, as I found out years later on GameFAQs, is that there's a secret passage between the rocks. Let's actually make our basement save. And into a bat cave. We are immediately assaulted by bats. Who get, get poor Hugo. Oh dear, we seem to have wandered a bit too close to one of the vampire bats. Looks like it's curtains for you. Now you'll never be able to rescue Penelope. Once again, Hugo is dead with his rock-colored hair. But now, we blow the whistle. It seems to have a strange effect on the bats. And they kind of just... What do you know? You appear to have confused the bats' sense of direction. It must be something to do with their sonar-like hearing. And now they just kind of linger. They can still kill you. Don't touch them still, but... Anyways, now for the real scary part. The mummy. If you actually, like, look at guys for this game, they all have this, like, these diagrams and things of how to position the mummy, because the mummy is very fast. As you can see. And you kind of just... Gotta get him caught on the rocks. I don't know if he's actually caught, so I might die here. Oh no, yeah, he'd be he'd be hunting me down by now. Oh yeah, actually take a look here. 
You're in a cave with the mummy's tomb. Treasure? A small fortune in gold. Get that gold. The nice thing is there are at least a few aliases for items and things. You can just say like knife instead of pen knife. Uh, you can say cork instead of bung. Gold instead of treasure. Stuff like that. And the back of the tomb. Here we are. The lake. And believe it or not, we are actually pretty close to done with this game. But here are our toughest puzzles yet. Looks like a serviceable boat. I wonder whether it would get you to the other side. Okay, I want to look at the whole, like, area. There we go. I was too close to the boat. You are now in a large open cavern. There's a small underground lake here, at the far side of which is some sort of jetty and a very old-looking man who appears to be just sitting on the jetty fishing. To the far right, at the back of the cavern, you can see a tunnel. So we got this cool boat. Get in. I read that the boat has a hole in the bottom. It just said it was perfectly serviceable. Like, I thought right now I was going to show off you, like, capsizing and dying, but no, it's just the perfectly serviceable boat is very clearly not. So, boat has a hole in the bottom. Unless you can plug it with something, this boat will surely sink before you get to the other shore. That's right, we are going to bungee boat. Plug mm. hole. With bung. Let's bung that hole. Get in. It's Hugo, chilling in the boat. Of course, we are still tied to the shore. Rope to stop the boat drifting away. Lucky we have our trusty pen knife. Cut the rope. Boat is now floating free. Loading free! Loading free! Push boat. And then this, you just get to watch this Hugo's excellent seamanship. This old man is just... Hello. Leave boat. Exit boat. Get out of boat. There's an old man in the way. Look, old man. I want out of the boat. Just looking at the boat again. Look, old man. Really? I think as I said boat in that sentence. He looks at least 200 years old. Push, old man. Whoop. Old man pushed back. Now we get to do this again. I didn't know you could... Hugo has seen... Well, I mean, he did just meet, like, Count Dracula. Dracula's been around for a little bit. Okay, let's... Try diplomacy. The old man seems about to speak. Ah, welcome to my lake, my fine young friend. I have been waiting for you. I am well aware of your quest, and I would hasten you on your way. However, before I let you pass, I must satisfy myself that you have the experience to handle the dangers that lurk through yonder passage. To this end, you will permit me to test your mettle with a few questions, the answers to which would come readily to the lips of any seasoned adventurer. Be warned, however, that I can only accept your first answer. The old man clears his throat and asks, What was the first name of the hero in The Hobbit? People who haven't played this game and thus aren't familiar with this part, y'all know y'all know any of these answers? Who was the hero in The Hobbit? Yes, sign out of things. All right, we got us a Bilbo. Correct. And the next question is, 
Where did Aslan live? Hints, not in a lore trope. Now, had I gotten here as a child, I wouldn't have even known Bilbo. I would not have known Narnia either. Uh, if you get it wrong, that's actually a good idea. Uh, wardrobe. That is incorrect. Since you have failed to answer my questions, I hereby doom you to float forever on my lake. You don't die, you just float forever on the lake. Except I'm pretty sure you can just talk to him again. Yeah. But we do have to rebuild, though. Hello, welcome. Just in time for everybody's favorite part of Hugo, the trivia. Okay. So, as was said, we got Narnia. Now, the next question is... Who invented Count Dracula? There's a chance I would have known this as a child. His mom. I mean, I suppose that's accurate. All right, got us a Bram Stoker. Correct. And the next question is, what should you do with a pangalactic gargle blaster? Ride it, fire it, drink it, or run away from it? Uh, I suspect that numerous people will know this one for sure. Actually, D is probably the correct choice, but... No, no, we gotta drink it. Now for another skilled adventurer. What's the name of the only mammal that can't fly that can fly? I mean, it's meant to be consumed. You gotta drink it. Y'all are struggling with this one. Alright, alright. It's our man. Two more to go. <laughs> what was the name of Roy Rogers' dog? This would have uh, absolutely destroyed me as a child to be asked this question. I like Roy Doggers, actually. Bilbo. Did I spell it wrong, or is that incorrect? Because I also always have two things in mind for that question. Okay. Drink it. Man. Yes. His horse was trigger, of course. His dog is bullet. That's a fun uh, pairing. And lastly, did you register this shareware? That's my timer shortcut. Good enough. Wonderful. Thou art truly a noble and wise adventurer. Go in peace, my friend, and good luck in thy mission. Leave boat. Exit boat. Get out of boat, please. Okay. Here goes. Going bald. One sixty seven points out of one ninety. Go 
Goodbye, old man. Try walking there. And lastly, we get this friend. You've arrived in a passage with a room at the end. There's a large guard at the end who appears to be standing just appears to be standing outside a kind of jail. Wait. Behind the guards, you can make out a familiar shape. Yes, it's Penelope, being held prisoner. Doesn't understand you. Can't punch the guard. What do we got? We got a knife. Stab guard. Ask guard about clothes. Look at guards. This is one dude you don't want to argue with. Argue with guard. Alert guard. Nothing fun here. Ah, low whistle. Okay. Nothing seems to happen. Fortunately for us, the whistle doesn't work in the basement. Oil guard. Yeah, actually, he seems to be oilable. Alas, there's only one thing we can do. Give guard all the treasure. You hand over one coin from your little bag of golden coins. He makes a gruff noise, which you assume was a thank you, and steps aside, allowing you to pass. Nearly there, Hugo. Here we are, with 188 out of 190 points, because we didn't pick up the pumpkin before we broke the pumpkin. What's that stray dot there? I've never noticed that. There's just one black pixel. Alright. He goes very excited. Congratulations! That's Penelope's silhouette. You're so glad to have rescued Penelope. You dance for joy! After cutting her ropes with your penknife, you open the bolts of the jail door and find yourself back in the basement. From here, you trip hand in hand up the basement stairs, past the ferocious doggy, through the kitchen, and out the front door to freedom, and live happily ever after. Goodbye! That's a lovely wedding photo. Thank you for playing! Don't forget to register to obtain your free Hugo's House of Horrors hymn booklet, free Hugo's House of Horrors self-running version, free unregistered Hugo 2, Who Done It. That will be $20 plus $4 shipping and handling. There's a 1-800 number. And that's Hugo. It's a very simple puzzle game, but it's a lot. It's a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, when I was also playing this as a child, we were playing off a shareware CD, and we didn't really understand computers that much, so we couldn't save, because it would obviously, it would try to save to the CD's directory. We didn't know how to, like, copy things off a CD. So we always had to play it in one sitting, and since the game's so short, we really didn't mind, which is honestly kind of a positive aspect in a weird way. Like, it's a short little game, and it's just a lot of fun. It's got a ton of charm to it. The sequels are even goofier than this. But of course, as one does, I eventually ended up... So essentially, yes, it was permadeath, because we had to restart every time. But, at some point, in like 2018 or so, I was messing around with other DOS games, ZZT, which many of the people in the chat are familiar with from my regular channel of Worlds of ZZT. I was converting this game to ZZT to showcase a fun glitch in ZZT that let you kind of fake a text parser, so to speak. That's a told lengthy story we're not going to get into. But in the process of that, I had to play a bunch of Hugo to look at how things react and reference the boards to redraw art and stuff. And I kind of realized that the game is a little buggy. And that got me thinking, 
wonder if anybody's ever done a speedrun of this game. And so I looked on YouTube, and there were like two. And neither of them were super serious attempts. They were just like, I'm going to speedrun Hugo's House of Horrors. It'll be funny. But I was, after watching those, I was like, wait a second. Because, surprisingly, this game does not have a thriving speedrun community, I'm like, I could beat that world record. And so I did. And then, of a year ago, somebody went in and beat my record. Which took the, from like a minute and 59 seconds to a minute and 49 seconds. And so, I figured this would be a good as time as any to try and take that record back. So I will be back in a moment, and then we will start trying to fly through this game a bit. So, BRB. All right, I am back. <clears throat> uh, thanks for stopping by, Anna. Hopefully, if you're able to, and I'm still going, you can catch some more exciting Hugo content. Actually, before I try doing a proper run, I'm going to kind of show off what the heck a speed run means in a game like this. So we'll just demonstrate a few things that can come in handy. It's not Hugo, it's HHH.exe. Thank you. I'm hoping to get it in a reasonable amount of time. So perhaps the, the first thing worth noticing is of course, obviously, if you're trying to play this game fast, you want your commands to be as short as possible. So you don't want to smash pumpkin. to open. Ooh. Okay. Wow. It, it was taking some time before those keys started showing up. It didn't like me holding down the backspace. Great. Now everybody gets to see open poo. Sorry. But you want to open the pumpkin instead. You know, you got to save every character you can. But the parser is interesting in this game. You don't need spaces. You just get key. You'll unlock door. Open door. Strangely enough, there are two exceptions, which I think just has to do with the length of the noun used. 
We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, the next big thing, this is what really made me decide to get a free world record, is realizing when I was working on my ZZT conversion, I had Hugo in one window. And then I had a ZZT, well, I had Kev edit, a ZZT editor in another. And I thought I had focus and Kev edit when I had focus and Hugo. And I pressed a key on the number pad. And it turns out Hugo can move diagonally. Neither of the existing speedruns used that. And you can kind of see just, it's fast. It's... It is not doing, like, trig to compensate for move speed. You move faster. You will cover grounds faster this way. So that was just, you know, okay, I can claim this world record pretty easy, and all I have to do is move diagonally and not type some spaces. Then, of course, it comes the question of, well, how much time can you save? As I mentioned before in our first run, we had to we looked under the cubby hole before getting the knife and things, and you can just do that without looking. You don't need the candle whatsoever. Get your knife, get your whistle. Go upstairs, get your mask, get your chop, all that other good stuff. Uh, particularly this is this room diagonal movement is great. Just really kind of go on a brisk jog. But as I was, like, playing, I just started trying, you know, more silly things. Like, why not? This game is not exactly handling every case it needs to handle. You can kind of do stuff that you wouldn't think. Like, uh, the oil can that's in here. You can just get it through the door. And noticeably, the oil... When you call it oil, I guess it's too short for the parser. You do need a space there. Get oil like this will not work. And later on when we have to oil the bolts, we also need a space for that. So now we've got a faster moving Hugo. And yes, our oil. Hugo's faster, our commands are shorter. How it's like, what can we exploit in the game itself? Uh, we don't have the chop. We didn't bother getting the mask. Oh, well, I did die. Just my luck. Oh no, I didn't make any saves for my little demonstration. Shoot. But, well, as you can probably guess, it's possible to dodge the dog. Let's do a safety save. Oh, we gotta get our oil again, too. See? Need that space. Get our oil. Get our whistle. Okay, now we got plenty of stuff to get this run moving. Save. Try this again. And there we go. If we just step in the room a little bit and walk into the wall for whatever reason the hitboxes don't hit right even though the dog is you know right there and we're fine we can just do whatever we want here aha okay so it needs eight characters to get the parser going now we can move rug oil bolts Open trap. We don't even need to call a trap door. Trap is enough. Yeah, that teleports us right down in here. 
blow our whistle. We don't need the space. Ah, well, it's a pretty valid guess. Oop. Bump on a rock ourselves. That's gonna kill like a bajillion run attempts, me forgetting that space every time. Or typing door. Mummy strats. Oh. There we go. And you know what? Who needs treasure? And you know what? We also don't have like a whole bunch of stuff to get in this boat. That's probably going to be a problem. Except it's not. Because Hugo can just walk on water. So the collision detection in this game ain't great. And apologies for the flashing that happens when Hugo actually goes off screen. But you can get out of bounds. Also, yes, this is indeed the shrunken Hugo sprite. And a bit of a diagonal movement especially is helpful. You can kind of just shimmy. That's the name of the game. There we go. Now I'm behind him. And look at that. We just beat the game again. And if you do all that right, that's how you get your minute 59s, minute 49s. That's, that's the, uh, the current strats, but today we're going to do one more. We're going to try and beat that record even more, and there's some new strategies. I'll take it even further. I should also mention that the getting out of bounds thing, that happened when... For whatever reason, I alt-tabbed out of the game, and when I alt-tabbed back in, Hugo was just, like, standing on a wall. In the basements. There's not a lot of spots you can do it. It is limited. You can't just get out of bounds anywhere. It really needs to be a sort of, like, a certain kind of collision for it to work, but... That's the big time save by far. It's being able to completely skip the old man's questions not need to do the boat, and thus not need to do the mask, and thus not need to do the lab. Or well, the mask is you don't need to do the, the chop and the dog. Basically, you get to skip a whole bunch of stuff. But now we're going to try and uh, actually do this for realsies. So let's see what we got. Start from scratch. Surprisingly, one of the toughest things is just getting Hugo in the exact right spot so it's possible to unlock the door without moving. Yeah, helps to start the timer, too. Not gone that far with my strats in terms of other commands. It doesn't really accept a whole ton of stuff. Ah. Snagged on the corner. Ah. 
Ah. So yeah, we're not getting the whistle. That's going to be a big time save. And the rat or the rats, the bats. They definitely move based on how you move. It's just tough to. You got to play it live. If you do it like perfectly, you can pretty consistently get through. But this is where we're going to have a couple of attempts. Expect Hugo to die in the caves a couple of times. Also, the mummy really has a hard time if you're moving diagonal. And now I gotta try and do this faster, which is, this is the tough part. This is the real run breaker. Ugh. I have like a slow setup, which is what I did to show it off the first time. Yeah, this killed it. But uh, we are skipping the whistle and we are just ignoring the mummy. This part is kind of what's going to do me in, especially since I'm looking at the wrong spot, I think. There we go, yeah. You just kind of got to wiggle your way up there. Can I talk to the old man here? I guess so. Well, I'm doomed to float on this lake forever. Goodness, I'm missing keys on my keyboard. This is the spot. Alright, alright. I gotta practice my shimmies. Yeah, see, that's good. Uh, world record currently is 149. 
And it should be possible to beat that by like 10 seconds if I get good clips. Okay. Until you're just past that. There we go. Uh, Hugo, basically first input, and time ends at congratulations appearing in the ending sequence. One more go. Is it one earlier work? Okay, no, no. So I'll be at like this row. Yeah. Okay. Let's give this another attempt. Oh, what am I doing? That uh, no. Nope. Only way to clear that out is to input the command or type backspace a bunch. Uh, nope. This is you actually still you can buy. I think the GOG version actually gets you like the Windows remake, which turns it into a point and click rather than parser. But you can still buy this game. The author is still around. I can't type. I can't type. My nerves. How, does, how do people actually do this, do this? All oh, their speedrun attempts on stream. Last time I went, when I went for world record last time, I just like did it by myself. I did not have an audience. Unlock, unlock. Mixing up like 50 verbs. Good luck, Charm. Ah, bad, bad. Oh. Yeah, it keeps the parser, unfortunately. Oh, come on. Sometimes you just don't want to go through the door. I mean, there's plenty of leeway just by virtue of having, like, new strats, but I don't want to beat it by a second when I can definitely beat it by something closer to 10.
I would like more Hugos. Ooh, that's probably... yeah. Got dogged. We're trying. I was showing off the strats before actually going for runs. Yeah, you can see how weird the hitboxes are in that, like, I collided with the bat, and the bat just, like, stopped and we stopped, and then the second bat was the one that actually got me. Uh, we are skipping getting the whistle and also just faking out a mummy like we were a football player. I'm going to be real good at typing open pumpkin by the end of the night. Ah, oh. still got me. Mummy really doesn't like you moving diagonally. Let me do a quick, quick lake skip. Okay, that's good. Gotta keep it fresh. Mm, too far. Took too long before I started moving in. Uh, you can't do anything with the bolts until, like, you've moved the rug, unfortunately.
was supposed to be open. That just killed it. Let's just keep going. Yeah. If you snag on that first rock in this room, it's usually it doesn't go well. That enter not go through. Yeah, is is a lot of typing for the most part. Reasonable. Good. Luck with the mummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the real reason that I put up with this. I don't have the patience to speedrun a game where I even like 10 minutes. Like this, this one fits in a tweet. That's the best part. Oh my god. None of that, none of that. Space. Bad bats. Go, oh, stop gotcharing me. I didn't hit the trigger. I'm like a pixel off.
Mm, doing it again. Ah, that's a real bad one. Yeah, see, that that's how I, like, keep you all compelled. Nobody wants to watch me restart a hundred times. Everybody wants to see the run. Oh, I'm, that's a bad spot. I'll allow it. Yeah. No, no adventure game is nice enough to... every door and then never open it. But what am I doing? Open door? It's locks. Door chat. Open pumpkin. It is locked. Don't worry. Uh-oh. I'm playing too well. Sorry, Anna. Just gotta get one last juke. Yes! That's a new world record. 133. Also, yeah, if you're moving diagonally when you walk into this board, Hugo goes nuts. So, always do that every time. Oh, congratulations. You are so glad to have rescued Penelope. You dance for joy. Easy. Uh, if you want to do low percent... Somebody actually on the DOS... Yeah. DOS Game Club forums found out that if you repeatedly throw the chop at the dog and pick it up, you keep getting more points and can theoretically roll over your points. So that kind of just destroyed all the all the fun of attempting those categories. But I'm sure you can do like a minimum items or something. You can actually lower your score by dropping items. Some of them it won't let you drop, as in the ones that don't have sprites to be dropped. All right, that was 133.
Now, last night when I was practicing and not recording, I got a 129 is the thing. So I'm satisfied and I can stop here. But that's not even like the best of the best. I know I can beat 130. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a few more. I'm gonna see if I can beat this 133. I'm gonna completely forget what my actual time is. 133.53. Type that in the most permanent space imaginable, the Firefox search bar. Okay. I will be back again in a moment. And then I'm just gonna play around because not every glitch I found is conductive to speedrunning, so we'll show off some stuff there and we'll take a break before we see if I can beat the world record again. So hold on one moment. Oh wow, that shed password is indeed his P.O. box. Also good, I didn't notice it was a P.O. box, and before I was like, oh shoot, I don't wanna show this dude's old address on stream for several minutes in a row. Alright. Let's get some, uh, Triple H going. He goes Houses and Horrors. So if you actually go onto archive.org, there's a couple different versions of this game uploaded. And the later ones actually do seem to fix things a bit. So as you saw from the title screen, 1.6 shareware. I don't know if any of them add any new tech, but this version seems pretty reasonable. Obviously it lets you do a lot. Let's, uh, let's get that pumpkin. See? Two points. Smash it. Get key. Smash key. So... First and foremost... Just because we can. We'll come up to the lab. It is possible without diagonal movement to actually 
wiggle your way back here, but you can kind of, yeah, there we go. You can kind of see too, like when you bump into a wall diagonally, it doesn't seem to resolve it quite right, which is almost certainly why you can get out of bounds. Not close enough, okay. Sure. Oh. Gotta get out. Later, nerd. So we grabbed the oil can through a door, so let's uh, do the same thing with the mask, because why not? That obviously would be part of the speed run if you needed the mask, but it turns out you don't. Yeah, you can see the very tiny bunk sprite. And you can also see that like it takes away points and gives them back as you drop and take items. Put on the mask. Let's do this. Let's get a chop. Butler. Please. Yes. Later, everybody. Sorry, talking to oneself is the first sign of madness. Woo, Butler. Did a little moonwalk there. Having a good time. Oh, there's our shop. Take off mask. You don't have it on. I know, it's hard to tell. Actually, does it get oil can without the space work? Nope, you just need a space there. But since that doesn't have like a visible sprite, if you try to drop an oil can, it's just like, no, you'll need that. Even though you can drop plenty of other stuff you need. Catch up. Where? I don't know. Let's do it this way. I almost forgot. Sixty-seven points. But when you throw it rather than drop it, you don't lose points. So, we can get as many points as we want here. But the real trick is in our first little regular playthrough of the game, after we went downstairs, it's like, you get rid of the mask, because who needs it? And we're going to find out why, because we're going to take the mask with us, actually. Oil that bolt. Undo that bolt. Drop mask. Let's make a safety save. Open door. Or open trap door. Get mask. Now we still have the mask. We're not supposed to have the mask. I probably should have grabbed the whistle, because now I do have to do the bat dodge. But here we are, in the basement, with our cool mask.
Got him. Yeah. Because now we're here as Tiny Hugo, just like in the lab, which also refuses to let you have the mask. Wear mask. You are already wearing it, you cross-eyed baboon! That's right, there's no mini-mask. So now the game is a little confused. No, that was just me dodging. All that was still legit. We really should have been killed by the vats and the mummy, but we didn't. But uh, we are wearing the mask even though it doesn't look like it. So, what if we take it off? We'll take off the mask. You go big! This tiny old man. <laughs> Gosh, tiny man. I think it is easier to actually get out of bounds like this when you're big, but obviously that involves getting the mask and doing all that stuff. It, it adds too much to be feasible. You just kind of go for a walk. Uh, the screen doesn't like it when you do that. Where am I? Kind of lost myself, sorry. I was not... There I am. Whoop, there I go. Cool Hugo trails. Oh man. Ugh. Tiny Hugo. Let's clear up this horrible screen, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, and um, also, since we were tiny when we restored our save, baby Hugo. It just toggles states. Uh, am I wearing the mask? Wear mask. Okay. Big Hugo. Oh, I'm actually out of bounds here now. Take that, parser! And if you go diagonally, you can get back up here pretty easy. Oh, that's a big dog. Oh, well. Yeah, now getting in and out of bounds is just a thing. Now we can finally walk on the grass. You can kind of see how the game handles overlaying and underlaying sprites. It's just... That's a good question. Let's uh, make a little courtesy save. Like, you can even see base mask, like, that's a save for that scenario. Tiny Hugo. And finally climb the tree. Kind of. Because we do actually collide with the path there, we gotta... Look, you can see more of the board. Oh, well. Hugo. And your, uh, your actual position and where you're drawn kind of desync a little when you do, like, screen wrapping stuff. Oh, they just get drawn over with the HUD. Um, I did find out pretty recently that all the graphics, like these... These graphics, at least, 
they're just uh, PCX files that have been renamed. You can see, so the parser also covers up a little bit more of the grass. It's just... They're just... Just plain old images. You can see the path ends. Alright, let's uh... Try exploring the rest of the house like this. If I can... Hmm. Well, when in doubt, am I wearing the mask? It is hard to tell, actually. Put on mask. That just made things worse. There we go. That's That looks to be inbounds. No mask. Um... Hmm. Okay, well, doesn't want to let me leave the board. That's good enough. Hello, on this man's backyard. Well. Pardon me. Excuse me. Dog. Okay. Where? Mask. There we go. Put on mask. Take off. Should be able to fit here now. It's, yeah, the hitboxes in this game are really something else. I think you have two. I really do think that it's head and, like, feet. Because if, when you get attacked by the bats, it seems like those are the spots that actually matter. All right, well, let's uh, let's see what we can do in the lab. Oh, we lose our mask. That's right. Oh, but we are still tiny. Step in the box. Okay. Is this sufficient? It is. Okay, Igor, press the blue button. Okay, and now I am wearing my mask in big. It's just a lot of fun. I Can I leave, or is it going to give me... Yeah, in your current state, you can't reach the door handle. Oh, no. Uh... Wear mask? Is it on or off? I can never remember. I don't have it. Yeah. This is just Hugo. Igor. Press. That's all you need. And I believe these are going to be normal because, well, quote, normal. Or press. Oh, that's a good question. If you try to give Igor a coin. I don't have the coin right now. No, I have to go through. Okay, back to normal. Now you can really easily get the bung if you need it. You go. There we go. Get mask. Wear mask. I 
I've arrived. I'm wearing the mask, actually, according to the game right now, so I should. Yeah, this guy has no problems with me. Alright, let's, uh... Actually... Yeah, let's get the coin. I don't think it's gonna do anything. I'm sure they're just, like, reused sprite and not, like, reused objects. But... Let's get the whistle just to make this easier. I don't know if I have the chop, but I don't need the chop. Oh, yes, I do need the chop. The dog is apparently right there now. Tragic. Do I have... Okay, I have chop. Wish me luck. <laughs> well... Toggy gets a second snack. That's just, uh... Oh, here we go, base mask. That should be... Yeah, okay. So I am wearing the mask. Do I have the whistle in this safe? Yeah, good, great. This the easy way. Uh, yes, you can go outside. That's a good question. Let's... Oh, no, if you throw the chop on a different board, it erases it from your inventory permanently for some reason. So, hope I don't need the chop. Uh, wait, no, we wanted to go back up. Oop. You go. Exits the tomb. I'll make him hold hands. Oh, he got me. Double gotchered. That's what I mean by, like, I definitely think Hugo has two hitboxes. One for the head and one for not. Did I say... What is this current state? I have a chop... I'm wearing the mask, that's good enough. Did I get the whistle here? Got the whistle. Oh, that's right, the dog is like in a bad spot for this. What if we do it this way? Maybe Tiny Hugo can live long enough. Whoop. What? Guess not. Alright, alright. Basement mask. We gotta do this legit. Get the gold. Get gold. Save on Twitch. Blow that whistle. I think it does let you actually eat it. Yes, you feel somewhat invigorated. And then, under normal circumstances, break your game.
Good enough. Okay. Cool. Cool game. Tiny Hugo eats the chaff, he will be even more invigorated. Nothing happens. That's a letdown. We'll find out the back and gotcha. No, but we can get into some video memory of inside the house, it looks like. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, once you go out of bounds, if you're just, like, walking through RAM. This is fun. Alright, let me... Okay, that's getting nasty. I know, we want a cool game. I don't have high hopes for Igor doing anything. But you never know. Oh no, my mask fell off. Give goals to Refused. Okay, yeah, that's just a generic message. So I was like, that's probably there for if you try to give it to the, the dude with the trivia. I mean, I'm sure you can, like, Edit your save and have the mask in here and see what happens. Hold to guard. Mm, tragically, no. Please, I just want to exit the room. Thank you. Mm. It's the bathroom. Oh, that's also like an instant warp, too. You don't actually have to walk in there. You go, everybody! My cool magic trick! Wanna hang out on the bed? All right. Anything, anything else we can think of? Also, this board you can get out of bounds on. I forget where exactly. The 
secret passage is like a single pixel, so it's not actually a time saver to get out of bounds. I've never managed to hit it from the other side. You mostly just mash diagonal keys until something happens. What else we got? Yeah, it's about yeah. It's almost certainly a single pixel, because I mean this here is like a one pixel gap. Like I can't move up or down where I'm currently standing. I can just make Hugo's head get chopped off. Can I talk to Penelope? Actually, she's here. Oh, she's been gagged. She's having a rough day. What else? What else? E, knife, mask, oil, bomb. Oh, actually. Let's go back to the lake. Do I have everything? Knife, bomb, perfect. Is not letting me get in the boat. Plug hole. Plug hole with bung. There we go. Yeah, spaces. Ah, okay. The boat is still the boat. Destroyed. Just because this game does get a bit weird. Mask run. What? Why won't it let me smash the pumpkin now? Whoa, this game is very confused, actually. Yeah, it just does not recognize these objects. Well, it recognizes the door. Yeah, you gotta be careful when you save, apparently. Don't have it. Uh, I saved while I was in the boat, and then I loaded a different save, because that makes things... That's how you like get screwy with how the mask is displayed and stuff. So, I I'm here. I can't interact with the pumpkin. I'm just getting like generic messages, like it doesn't see the object. Um. Oh, that's actually a good idea. Uh, exit boat. Keep forgetting what it is. Leave boat. Talk to old man. It, it, like, it recognizes that we're in the house, the outside room here, because this generic look message is still this. It recognizes the moon. It doesn't recognize the objects. I'll try this. If we do the trivia, then we should be able to leave the boat. Talk to old, good enough. Bilbo. Narnia. Sure. 
the man. Bullets. Yes, but not actually. Okay. So now. Whoop. Ah. Uh, shoot. He won't let me cancel. Well, that was the new game save. That's easy enough to recover. Well, now I can't go outside. I mean, I can. I can walk outside. So let's see what happens. I don't know. Let's, uh... What one's Twitch right now? That's basement, right? No, that's here. Oh, yeah, like... Okay, no, I thought the mummy was just not chasing me at all. Ego grows big and dies. All right. I think we get the idea. This is kind of a, a glitchy game when you start doing things it doesn't want you to do. It's a lot of fun like that. I'm going to give it a couple more goes, see if we can take down that record a little bit more. And then I think we'll call it a day. It is, it's been like two hours now, it seems. So first, though to recreate my new game save. Okay. So the time to beat is 1 minute 33 seconds. 0.53. I don't know how accurate that is between me pressing the button and everything, but... There we go. Hugo desperately wants to leave now. He's tired of this. brain can order information properly. Every time. That bat, that damn bat. Oh, well.
You can always time it after the fact. Make things extremely awkward if this one actually works. Well, I just like fat fingers and felt like I did not have my finger on the U key, even though I did. Or no, I didn't want the U key, I wanted the, to oil it. Can't undo the bolt without oiling the bolt. It refuses to budge. Always with the gotcha. Bad spot, won't unlock. Especially once I hit the button too early. Yeah. those corners. Jimmy. No! <laughs> My input buffer. Mm. Oh, I'm not even getting behind this last jerk. Excuse me, sir. Alright. I mean, you can see what it would look like. I almost had it.
felt like I stumbled on my keys there. Ooh, good bats. Thank you, bats. Good mommy. Good shimmy. Good enough. Yeah, you have to go down to hit that trigger. And you buffer your input a little. Yeah. It all came down to the shimmy. We're getting there, we're getting there. We're gonna make it happen. I really want to beat. I really want to get it under 130. Especially since I did. I just didn't record it like a dummy. Good start. Great start. Can't ask for better bats than those. think a game with like a dozen commands be easy to not mix them up but sure enough Gotta get the good. You gotta get the good front door. The, the meta has advanced beyond bad front door. Come on. I think I snagged on the door itself there. So you can actually buffer your input. Like if during the screen transition, so you can start moving immediately. Mm, they almost cooperated. I know, can you like look away again? That seems to be the, the key here. That's the secret. Why are Hugo's facial... Are they? Hang on, we're not starting a run here. We're looking at Hugo's face. Yeah, I think they're dark red. It looks like they're dark red when it's left and right. And then brown when he's facing forwards. Interesting. Too far. Ah, 
I'm waiting for like the position of the bat here to actually be important for the other bats. Good bats. Give me the good bats. Bad bats. Uh, so I actually was like looking into that when I started planning doing this. Like, if you look at how Hugo One's files are packed, there's just like three files for every room. And I was actually able to parse out the collision detection to some extent. And I didn't see anything there. I mean, we do go through the closed door, yes, but... That path doesn't seem like something you can shorten, unfortunately. Also, if you do get out of bounds there, you have to get back in bounds to hit that uh, exit trigger, too. So it's tough. The basement is the only other room I know of where you can easily get out of bounds. Oh, Hugo. Hugo, Hugo, Hugo. Enter the door, please. That's a bad spot. I did that wrong. I'm saying there theoretically could be, depending on how it's coded. Like, you see the bat sometimes makes that swoop. I don't know if, like, where in the movement pattern the bat is on this screen has anything to do with the bats on the other screen. Because they do all sort of swoop in sync. I know when I first ran this, I wasn't loading a save for multiple tries. I was always quitting out of the program and starting fresh. But uh, I am not the experienced speedrunner, and the person who beat my world record has plenty of other speedruns, and they were basically doing this, just standing here and then hitting the timer when they start actually playing. And I'm like, you know what? That seems a lot better, actually. Okay, here we go. on my command there. Yeah. I mean, he, it feels like you get a few sort of patterns. Like, I'm sure plenty of my attempts have had me die in specifically this way. The double KO.
a lot more over than I need to be, actually. You but why you gotta be this way? Try doing some juking. Oh, they're just feasting on me there. Kind of the the thick part of the black border here is the sweet spot. No, 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 no. You gotta do in one movement, one diagonal. Did I not even? I didn't even type it, did I? So, go. No, not open. Unlock. I feel like I'm getting better at the intro, at least. As I can't type. Well, that's what I get for talking.
dog. The rare dog death. That's not the right word. No, it's not too long between movement. Clear, clear, clear. Oh, you go. Man, I would love to go all the way to GDQ for a run that takes less than two minutes. I wish the other games were as easily breakable. You go, you go, you go. Nah, you go upstairs, you go. That movement. Yeah, I just wanted to recover that one. Still at 132. Yeah, I, I took quite a break to just show off weird glitches you can do in this game. And we were having some fun with that. Don't worry, I'll post the VOD. Oh, man. It's very... I don't know how, like... People who speedrun regularly like communicate with an audience while playing their game. It just destroys me immediately if I say a single word. If I so much as glance at a message in chat. Oh, why did I do that? That's not the word you type. Alright, alright. Drink some water. That was weird.
Please, bats. Please, mommy. I actually collided with him and started moving horizontally, so it stopped. So it slowed me down, and I got caught. I got cotchered. Good bats, bad mummy. The evil mummy. It's curtains for me. Seem to be okay, actually. I've been gotchered again. Sure. Good, good. No. Nope, I keep screwing up the trigger. Well, oh, 131. You know what? I think I'll take that. Better can be done. And gives everybody a, a target ripe for the taking, because I know it can be done faster than this with the current strats. Must dance for joy. Goodbye.
Well, uh, everybody make sure to download the Twitch VOD because ever I've been cutting off these recordings every so often. I forgot to restart the last one, so I don't actually have a local copy of this. It's all entirely thanks to Twitch that it will exist. All right, so that's been a, a bit of an afternoon. It's all good. I've Trust me, I've forgotten to record my ZZT streams plenty of times and had to go with the Twitch VODs. It's fine. They happily let you download your own. Quite possibly, yes, actually. You probably could just clip it. That's a good way to do it. But, uh, that is Hugo's House of Horrors, and... It's a fun game even when you're not trying to beat it in under 90 seconds. It's actually a more fun when you're not trying to beat it in under 90 seconds. It's a lot more stressful when you are. There's a chance I'll be a dummy and try, like, getting the sub-130 again off-stream and just recording it this time, like I should've in the first place. But... I don't think I'm going to stream that again anytime soon just yet. I might actually just do like a chill, casual stream of Hugo 2 and 3. Because they're also fun to play. I would love to actually play some Whodunit. That one's my personal favorite, honestly. Even though it's got plenty of weirdness to it as well. But that will be at a different time. I need I need a brief Hugo break, at least for today. But thank you all for watching. Um let me plug everything while I got people watching. First and foremost, despite this being like my personal Twitch channel. What I normally do is regularly do streams of old and new ZZT games over on twitch.tv slash worlds of ZZT. Like, straight up, if you had fun with this, that's the channel to follow, because that is every Friday and every Sunday. And this Friday, I'm actually going to be playing Mission Enigma, which is a very big-name game in the worlds of ZZT, at least. Uh, I do that as, like... My thing these days is just ZZT in general. I run the Worlds of ZZT Twitter account, which is a bot, and I run the Museum of ZZT, which is an archive, and I'm always writing and streaming ZZT games, and that's all like a Patreon-funded thing. And that is currently my job, so it is super awesome for anybody who can support that in any way, even if that just means like leaving reviews on old games and just giving them attention, streaming some ZZT is actually a fantastic thing you can do. And it's a, a ZZT game you should not stream, actually, though. Is the Hugo's House of Horrors conversion I did to the format. Because it relies on weird engine quirks to even be possible to let you spoof having a text parser essentially it ain't great it's more it's just a fun tech demo and i was like hugo would actually fit the bill for something that's extremely short and doesn't actually have a whole lot in it if i was going to convert something rather than make something original and of course the whole reason i was like hey yeah actually i will play hugo again oh, there goes the timer because i pressed a dot is because Hugo's House of Horrors, the whole trilogy, is the game for October over on DOS Game Club, which I have nothing to do with myself. But it's a fun podcast I enjoy, and it's a great excuse to play some old DOS games, classics, obscure titles, whatever. Uh, they're doing like a year of the adventure game this year, so every other month for 2021 they've been playing an adventure game, which is how Hugo just slotted so perfectly into October. And that's going to be... The Hugo time period will be ending soon, and then we'll be entering into Transport Tycoon Deluxe, which I've never played, and then in December, Space Quest. And that's just a lot of fun. It's fun to play these games again. Uh, the podcast is... Half the time, I don't even actually 
play the game whatsoever and I'll end up just listening to the podcast and be like, actually, this sounds pretty awesome. So I do want to shout out those folks over there for running that podcast for several years now and getting a bunch of people besides me to play Hugo again this year. That's going to be about it. There's the ZZT stuff. There's the DOS Game Club that I was playing this for specifically. You can follow this channel. Sure. But again, like... I mean, I do actually hope to play some Hugo 2 and 3 now. They will not be speedruns. I did a little bit of, like, glitch hunting with Hugo 2. I don't know. That's a good question, if the author knows. I hope he knows. I did actually have to shoot him an email because something on his site wasn't working when I went to buy the game, like, last year. Because after I did my first speedrun, I'm like, you know what? I should register this shareware, actually. So, he knows that there's at least an audience, but if he's aware that there are multiple people playing Hugo specifically this month, that I do not know. But, thank you all for watching. I hope you all had fun. I'm glad you all stuck around for like three hours. And again, just uh, swing by the World of ZZT Twitch. That'll be Friday, 6 o'clock Pacific Time, 9 o'clock Eastern. And then Sundays at 2 o'clock Pacific Time, 5 Eastern are the regular schedule for that. And hopefully I'll see some of you folks there. Alright, I need a break. Later. <laughs>